Hello and welcome to a new episode of Josh's Car Corner. Today I am in Dane, Wisconsin in a heated, borrowed garage with my friend Joe Morgan here and we're going to be doing a little project today. He is tired of being slower than me and we're going to remedy that today by installing a cam and a valve train upgrade on his GXP. And we'll see how things work out once this is all done. Right now, the car is sitting at about 485 crank, 422 wheel. This cam and uh, lifters and springs should uh, help push it over that 500 threshold. Yes, and I think he's finally going to be faster than me again, which is, of course, going to inspire me to then make the GTL faster and keep that little competition going. We'll see. That's yet to be determined. <laughs> yet to be determined. <laughs> well, we're going to start by taking the hood off here, and we're going to walk you through the process of swapping a cam on one of these modern LS motors. It's really not as complicated as you may think it is. Uh, we're going to go through all the steps and show you what's needed if you ever want to do this on your own car someday. So we're going to take the hood off here, and we're going to get to work. I'm trying to think here. Do you pull bolts first? Um, struts first. Struts first. Pull okay. the hood up. Yeah, so it should be like that. Also, it doesn't yeah. need to be totally pulled off? No, but it needs to be out and, and, uh, and unsecured okay. on both ends. Oh, on both ends? Okay. Yeah. Well. Alright, I'm free. Okay, you slide it forward of the fenders. And Got it? Up. Okay. Sure. I'm kind of thinking just lay the wipers up on the windshield. Yeah. And you have to kind of. There we there. go. Okay. We can dispose of this. We could. <laughs> so, the cool thing about this deal is, is we've got a wood burning stove in here. And he just pulled out his incredibly nasty and disgusting cabin filter, and we're going to use that as fuel to keep us warm. <laughs> That's it. It's important to multitask. Absolutely. Blood. All right, we're 10 minutes in. We have the first blood of the yes. day. Yes, you're not really working if you're not bleeding. Yeah, if you're not sacrificing something to the car gods, <laughs> bad things will happen. Oh. So for all you guys that run MAF Delete, so he's got... A VCM intake and it's got a nice air filter in it but look at what is in that map screen and I've already knocked some of it off yeah so that's why it's there don't run a map without a screen yep well Joe's going ahead and he's breaking loose all of the lug nuts we're gonna take the front wheels off because we're gonna take the front fascia off the car you don't have to do that to change the cam but we're gonna do it just so we can have a much better view of everything and show you everything that's going on I'm going along. I already took all the spark plug wires off. Now I think I'm going to remove the coil brackets while he's working on that. When you're pulling the ignition coil bracket off, it's best to just pull it all off as one big bracket. You just undo this big connector on each side and you can leave all the connections on the coils and just unbolt the entire bracket and take it all out as one piece. So there you go, this is the entire coil bracket. It just held in with five of these studs like this. You just back all five of those out and the whole thing comes out as one piece. I'll do the same on the other side and we'll move on to fuel injection. Okay, I'm getting ready to disconnect the fuel line so I can take the whole plenum and the injector rail off as a unit. Now, the rail's still gonna be pressurized from the last time you run in the car. So you need to depressurize it or you're gonna get gas everywhere. At the end of the fuel injector rail on the driver's side, there's a little straighter valve here. So I always just take a little paper towel and push the little valve open with a screwdriver, lead the pressure out of the rail before I disconnect the feed line from the car. Yes, that is nice and flooded now. Perfect. There we go. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> much easier? Oh my God, than mine. Well, for one thing, it's a lot deeper. That's what she said. Oh, there's the first one of those of the day. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take the intake plenum and the fuel rail off as one unit. Now, there's just 10 of these long 10 millimeter bolts that hold the plenum down to the actual block of the car. Um, there are a couple of wiring connections you have to disconnect the coolant temp sensor. There's also a vacuum line connection back here you'll want to disconnect and have off and also you'll need to disconnect all the connections for each fuel injector you just the little gray clips you just pull them back and then you can push and release and then they all come off and you don't have to worry about getting them back in the right order because the way they've been bent that way for so long they're just going to stay in shape so you don't have to worry about numbering them just disconnect them how does that come off 
You need light? Yeah. There we go. There you go. Nope. Perfect. All right. Okay, where do you want to go? And you know what? Why don't we just bring it over and put it over the other wheel of the uh, tractor? Put it on the tractor. <laughs> yeah, there's a tractor over here that you can't see. It's old. Uh, I got mine. All right, I'm loose. Oh, you're still going? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we're back from lunch. We uh, got the whole cooling system drained out. Joe is in the process right now of removing the upper and lower radiator hoses, and we'll get the condenser unhooked, and uh, we'll get the front of this whole setup off, and we'll get to working on the engine. So, we've now got the radiator and everything out of the way, and yep. it's time to start taking front accessories off. Yep. What we're going to start with, I think, is the crank pulley. We'll get that out of the way. The crank pulley is the one that we're going to need the compressor for, though. It is the one we're going to need the compressor for, and the AC compressor belt is still on there. Okay. That wasn't removed. No. Russ told me it doesn't have to be removed because there's a special shutoff switch in there that if it senses that there's no um, refrigerant, uh -huh. it won't engage the belt. Oh. He told me not to worry so about it. Can, so it can freewheel. Yes. Okay. Yep. Good to know. There we go. I see, said the blind man. Looking at this here, I think all we're going to have to do is take the crank pulley off and the water pump off. We'll have to take the power steering pump off the head since we're taking the head off. But we should be able to keep the condenser where it is and the alternator where it is to keep things a little simpler here. Got it. Joe just undid the cam sensor wire. We'll get into that once we get the uh, front cover off and show you what, what's happening there. Well, we managed to get the crank pulley bolt out. We had to make ourselves a lever by extend by putting a pipe on a breaker bar and he had to put the car in fourth gear put his foot hard down on the brake and then i was able to get the thing loose by hand so now, we've got out, now he's going to pull out his fancy dancy crank puller tool or crank pulley puller and we're going to get the crank pulley off and we'll get into this uh cam installation Just, yep Right now, Joe is removing the water pump. We've got six bolts whole total holding it in, three on each side. And once he gets those two out, we're going to expect another spill because you never can get it all. And now we should just pull right back and off. There you go. That's why we have the pan underneath. That's why we have the pan. So we had to take the tensioner off for the AC belt because it was going to interfere. And we might have to take the alternator bracket off for the same reason. We just took a bolt and a nut out there, which allowed us to move the coolant lines down and away. And because we have four bolts down here in the oil pan that have to come out in order to get the front cover off and then there's eight bolts that go around so we're still trying to figure that one out now there we go To break it loose, your best bet's going to be to get a screwdriver and get the tip in right behind here and, okay. and pry here just to break it, just okay. to break it loose. So maybe this? From, yeah, from kind of that angle, from the top, you got to get it in behind that though. There you go, it's loose. Is it? Yep, yeah, I, I pulled back. Don't keep, don't keep, okay. don't, don't, you don't want to mark because that's all ma ma mating surface. Okay. Okay. That's good. Now get you just just get your fingers in there and see if you can pull it off. Ooh, there you go. Ta-da! Perfect. And there is your oil pump right there, and that is our cam and its drive gear. 
Now, a little lesson we'll tell you right now is that you might notice on the front cover that it had a sensor. That is the cam sensor. And what does it do? Well, this is what it does. This pattern right here is bred by the sensor. And what it basically tells the engine computer is when the number one cylinder is on a combustion stroke because you have a 58X reluctor on the on the crankshaft to let the ignition know what's going on but it doesn't on its own know whether it's on a compression stroke or an exhaust stroke so this is what tells it where the number one cylinder is and if that's not working you'll end up with a slow start or a no start condition so that's what the cam sensor does so now we'll get the oil pump off and then we'll be able to see the entire drive setup and we can get that apart uh, actually let's just get the oil pump off first Okay, so we're working on taking the valve train apart right now. I already got the first side done. We're going to work on this side. So what I'm doing is we're just finding the valves that are completely up and closed right now. And I'm just taking those apart and then that will leave me with the valves that are open. And then I'll have Joe spin the motor until they close and then we'll take them apart. Because what you don't want to do is, ha is take your rockers apart with pressure on the springs. Because you could end up damaging something. So we try to get all the pressure off of them. Then we'll break them loose and take them out. Okay, so we'll just take them all out and then we can set them all right in one place so we keep them in order and we know where they go when they're time to put back in. Joe's removing the ground wire right now. We have to take some things off the head on both heads before we can pop the cylinder heads off here. So there's a ground wire and then there's another one behind it. Mm. It's a bracket for the wiring harness that has to I'm come off. Need a deep socket 15. You're going to need a deep 15. That is an ECU ground right there. And that's important to remember because if you forget to put that back on, car no run. Now we need to take the coolant cross. This is a coolant crossover pipe. This is a part of the bleeding system for the coolant. What this pipe does is it, if there's air in the coolant system, it'll get evacuated by going through that pipe and then out through the radiator. And that connects the heads together, so that has to come off. Okay, we had to make ourselves room to get to the bottom bolts on the cylinder head, so Joe is unbolting the headers from the exhaust right now, and then we're thinking we can pull them out the top so we can get the heads off. Okay, we got the first head off right here, and I'm about to take the springs off. This is a great little tool that I picked up from Comp when I did the valve train upgrade on my car. For $100, what it does is it bolts into where the pedestals stand for the lifters, and then it's just got this thing you turn right here, and it'll turn two valves at a time and compress them. And then you can take the retainers out, and you can go work twice as fast as you could with a normal spring compressor. It's a great little tool. Sometimes you have to give the retainers a little help to break loose, so just use a plastic mallet. It'll snap like that and just keep working them down until they break loose. Valve springs out. We'll go straight to our new pack springs. These are 1219X springs. These are the same springs that I used in my motor. They've got a 625 max lift um, and a lot more resistance than the factory springs. And they've got a special cut in them too, so they will mount flush. And they've got a very high bass frequency, so you can rev the nuts off your motor and not have to worry about the springs developing instabilities with frequency. And these should definitely keep your valves closed at high RPMs too, so you don't have blow-by. Okay, now we've got the oil pump off, so the next thing we want to do is we want to spin the motor around a couple of times. What that's going to do is it's going to turn the camshaft, and the camshaft is going to push all the lifters as high as they can possibly go in the trays. So when it comes time to take the trays off, hopefully the lifters will come right out with the trays. And we also want to stop uh, with our timing marks together. There's a timing mark on each gear here, on this gear and on this gear. There's two dots, and what they need to do is be pointing right at each other, and you will be at top dead center on cylinder number one, and that's where you want to leave it when you take the camshaft out. Oh, I went a little past, but that's okay. I can back it up just a little bit to get it where I need it. 
There, that is lined up. So that's what you want it to look like. See the little dot right here? And then the big dot here, lined up with that hole right there, that is top dead center. Right now Jay's gonna take the bolts out for the tensioner, but we're gonna leave the tensioner in there. Okay. Or you can take them all the way out so it hangs right. there. And I do have a replacement tensioner and bolts. Now we're going to take the crank or the cam bolt out and we're going to use the big gun because we don't want it to spin. The gear is not coming off the crank. The gear doesn't come off. The chain comes off the gear. Ah. Okay. Perfect. Now we're going to take the cam plate off. This is what secures the cam in. These are T40 bolts, and there's four of them. Okay. Now we're going to take the lifter trays out because we don't want to have any chance of interference. With we're removing the cam, so we're going to take the trays out, take the lifters out, then we'll remove the camshaft. And we got none. Oh, no, we got one here. Two of 16. Two of 16. But... Good thing I've got that magnet. Yeah, if this happens, not to worry. Just get yourself a magnet. A big honking one like this one. And they will come right out. And now we can pull the cam out. Just go slow and steady. Don't rush it. You'll eventually find your line up and she'll come right out. There you go. My first cam. <laughs> you can look at the wear, the wear pattern where the lifters have been running. That's pretty even. So it was wearing pretty good. So out with the old, in with the new. Now it's time to lube the camshaft up and we're going to use assembly lube, which is a very, very sticky lubricant and it'll stick to the metal because when you initially fire the engine up, obviously it's not going to have lubrication right away. So you need to make sure that it's got plenty of it until it gets oil pressure built up. And we got to spread this on every lobe, every journal, and then just rub it around so everything's coated. So you've got good lubrication during your initial fire up. Looking at the cam at the lobes, mm -hmm. I mean, as I looked at the stock cam, you can see how much more aggressive the lift is to them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, and you got to remember too that it's only it's only a fraction of the actual lift because it's being multiplied by the rockers on top by a factor of 1.7 to get to 581. So take 587, divide it by 1.7, and that's what's actually happening here. Now, when you put it in, I've got just the end journal in. Yep. Just slide it in slowly, and when you get to the next one. It wouldn't hurt just to twist it a little bit just to make sure that you're, you still got lubrication on your journals. Going in nice and straight. These bolts on the end really help to keep it level and give me some kind of traction. Up until this one. There we go. Perfect. She's in. That's true. Get all yep. the lubricant around yep. on all the bearings. Get your bearings lubed. 
Okay, well we've got our camshaft in and we've got our new three bolt pulley on that's designed for the cam. We've got our new timing chain on and we've got our new tensioner installed. Uh, we put the retention plate back on with those four Torx bolts. Those go to 18 foot-pounds. These three cam bolts right here go to 26 foot-pounds. And these two bolts here to hold your new tensioner in also go to 18 foot-pounds. And now that we've got everything lined up, as you can see, our bottom and our top dots still match up, so we're still in time. Now all we have to do is pull this little clip out and we have tension. So now we can get move on to our lifter trays and put our lifters back in and start putting the top of the engine back together. There we go. Okay, we've got our new lifters and lifter trays installed. Now, on the LS7 lifters, which is what we're using here, the oil passages are in the different place to the standard lifters that came in the LS3. So I have, just to keep everything consistent, all of the oil passages on the lifters pointing toward the front of the motor, just to keep everything uniform and the same. Uh, if you're using different lifters from a different company, they might have oil holes in different places. But I was told, just for consistency, have all of your oil passages pointing the same way. So that's what we've got done here. And the bolt to hold these lifter trays down needs a very small amount of torque. The book actually calls for 106 inch pounds, which the equivalent to that is about nine foot pounds. So if you've got a torque wrench that can go that short, uh, use nine foot pounds and you'll be good to go. There we go, dowels aligned. Nice. Josh did all of those valve springs that he described the uh, installation for earlier. We cleaned up the head gasket main, uh, mating surfaces. Have the brand new GM head gaskets on here. Okay, we got the cylinder heads bolted down. We won't bother showing you the torquing procedure because it's got three different stages and it's complex. So we're just going to put the what's in the service manual right on the side of the screen to the left here and you can use that as your reference for how to get the heads torqued down. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the valve train back in. Now what we're going to do is we know the firing order. The firing order is 18726543. So what we're going to do is we've got this engine at top dead center on number one. We're going to put those lifters on. Then we're going to turn the motor 90 degrees. Then we'll be top dead center number eight. We'll set those. We'll turn it 90 again. Then we'll be on number seven and so on and so forth. And we're going to set them all and tighten them all down when in the, those cylinders are at top dead center. So that's what we're going to move on to. Well, it's about 8 o'clock at night, and unfortunately we've run into some problems. We didn't realize it at the time, but when we were removing the oil pump, we were inadvertently bending the pickup tube in such a way that we cannot get it back to straight. So we can't reattach the pickup tube square to the pump. And also, at one point, I unfortunately Joe was trying to pry the oil pump loose, and ended up putting a couple of good Mars in one of the gasket mating surfaces. So the cam's in, the motor's ready to run once it's got an oil pump that uh, has got a pickup tube that works and uh, it's got a water pump and all that stuff. So we got that part accomplished. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll pick this up. This won't be the end of the episode. The end of the episode will be when the car is running and driving. But yes. that's where we're at right now. Okay, well it's a week later. We are now back at work on the car. We figured out what to do about the oil pan. This never crossed our minds last week, probably because we were so burned out from working on this, but Joe works at a Bergstrom dealership and one of the mechanics there has done a cam in his G8 and he told Joe that what he needs to do is disconnect the engine mounts um, and just do undo two of the bolts and then you can raise the engine up a couple inches and then that's enough to get the pan out. So that's what he did. He bought a new oil pickup tube and we just examined both the pickup tubes and we noticed that the one that we was originally on the car we did put a kink in the last bend a little more than the replacement uh pickup tube has got so it is a good idea that we're replacing it but we're going to get it all back together and we're going to get this uh, sucker back together today and maybe even get it fired up so joe bought this special uh, rtv from gm that so to put on the pan gasket and all the mating surfaces that we needed on but it comes in this applique where you need a caught gun we don't have a caulk gun, so we took a C clamp and a big socket, and we made ourselves <laughs> we made ourselves a caulk gun. That is pure roadkill right there. <laughs> okay, we've now got the oil pump back in. We've got the new pickup tube on, and we've got the front cover reinstalled. And Joe is putting the oil pan back on right now. Here's what's cool about these LS engines: 
All of the bolts essentially on the front of the motor and behind this cover are 8 torque to 18 foot pounds. These are 18, the bolts that hold the pump on are 18, um, the bolts that hold the cam security thing on are 18, it's all 18. Now on the oil pan, 8 of the bolts are 18 foot pounds and then there's 2 on the back that go into the rear cover. Um, the factory, or if you have the service manuals, will call it the rear oil seal housing or the rear oil seal. But they're these two really long bolts and they're thin. Those get nine foot pounds, but everything else underneath the oil pan bolts gets 18. So we're going to get the pan back on and then we're going to start putting the front accessories back on the engine. All right, we got all the front accessories on, belts are on, we've got the radiator in, we've got all the coolant lines connected to it, which there are a lot of. There are six small ones on here. You've got the two AC lines right here, then there's also coolant lines for the transmission and cooling lines for the power steering, so six total, and then you got the two main hoses up on the top here. So we got all that done, and now it's time to start putting the front dress back on the car and start making it look like a G8 again. side in and they got to go up and then slide yep. back right yep okay I got mine in here's her in okay we've got the front of the car back on now now what we're gonna do is we're gonna prime the engine right now I've got all the spark plugs back out and I don't have any of the fuel injectors hooked up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the starter to turn the motor over and that's going to turn the oil pump and that's going to fill the whole system up with oil so when we go to fire it for real Hopefully the whole oil circuit will be full of oil and it'll have pressure right away and our lifters won't clatter so long. So I'm going to go hook the battery back up and then I'm going to look at the valve cover here. I've got it taken off. I'm going to look in here and I'm going to, once I see oil pooling around the springs and on the, uh, and on the, around the cylinder head, then I know I've got enough oil in the system and then I can put it all back together and fire it up for real. See a little bit of oil right there and right there. I'm going to do that one more time just to be sure. Okay, I see new oil right here. We've definitely got oil on the springs now, so this thing is primed and ready to fire. Okay, I got the injectors hooked up, the plugs are hooked up, then back in, the ignition system's all hooked up, the engine's primed, Joe is in the car, I just hooked the negative battery cable up, and we are about to try to fire this thing up for the first time with the new cam. Whenever you ready, sir. Technical break-in period. There is a flat tapping cam, but one that doesn't have hydraulic rollers. 
then you, they want you to hold the RPMs and don't be revved so long so the metals can get used to contacting each other. But we have rollers on our lifters with a hydraulic roller system, so we don't need a real break-in period. So we're just going to warm it up to temp, make sure there's no leaks, then we're going to shut it off, get it on the ground, and she's ready to drive. car out we're all packed up and ready to go Joe's gonna drive this thing for a couple hundred miles and get it all make sure it's everything is in good shape and then we're gonna tune it next weekend I hope this episode is gonna be a good guide for you to follow to do a cam swap of your own we hopefully you can follow some of the tips that we use and also avoid the mistakes that we made I'm gonna I kept those in because I don't want you guys to make the same mistakes that we made uh, but hopefully it'll help you if you ever want to do a cam swap on your own car I mean all the LS engines are pretty much the same so it's a pretty easy guide that you can follow and do a cam swap of your own so once again, thanks for watching Josh's Car Corner, and we will see you guys next time. Yeah. What was that? That was the car settling on the jack stand. Oh, it The probably... whole thing dropped like a half inch right next you to know, me. You know, it was probably... But if it had fallen off the jack stand and crushed my foot or something, then it would be going on fail army. Yeah. <laughs> that was the rear, uh, that was the hood cover. <laughs> oh, uh, sliding down? That was the kind of, yeah. Well, Fortunately, it just slid on the glass. It didn't, yeah. nothing metallic hit the trunk. No, and there's nothing metallic under the bottom of that anyway, so. The Audi. Oh. <laughs> the button in the pocket. I'm like, what is that noise? If you, didn't, if, you didn't, if you missed a pathetic little horn right there, that was my Audi. I hit the panic button on my key <laughs> when it was in my pocket. What was that? All right. <laughs> you had it in reverse. No. Blood on camera. <laughs> You're not bleeding, you're not working on cars. Right. I'll just make my Zachary about to listen and light the car right now. There we go.